And then also business passages. So this is a pretty general coverage area, social science, science, the humanities and business. But knowing that these are pretty much the types of, question, uh, of passages that the GMAT is going to send our way, we can identify them and we know what we're up against a little bit more. Business passages can have to do with things like management, regulation. For some reason they like passages that have to do with regulation. Uh, that's probably because as a business person uh, you'll have to deal with that stuff and so it, you know, just it's the type of reading that one might expect a business person to be able to do well. Um, and understand marketing, of course, and, and economics. So what we're going to do first here is look at a few examples of these types, make sure we can identify them. We're going to break down the paragraphs and then we're going to uh, jump into the different question types. So let's start with uh, social science. Let's take a look at an example of a, of a social science passage. I'm going to work, just skip over this question really quickly. Great, so uh, let's take a look at this passage. The way, I want you to, don't start reading it, I want you to sort of follow me as you read it and we're going to read this together um, and I'm going to show you how I would go about reading these passages on, on the GMAT or the LSAT or really, really any test that has reading comprehension. Uh, we're just going to concentrate on the first and second pair, sorry, first and second sentence, sorry, first and last sentence in every paragraph. There we go. So. Let's take a look at this first one. One of the aims of public education is ostensibly to provide equal opportunity to the children of all citizens in order to level the playing field and erase class and cultural distinctions. So, as this is the first sentence I read about this passage, it may be sort of letting me know the gist of the whole passage, but it may take a huge turn. We'll be able to tell that pretty quickly when we read the last sentence of this paragraph and the rest of what we're about to do. So we read this piece. Now let's go down here. The relation of quality public education to the upward social mobility and economic status of one's parents is still an issue. So as you can see, we see public education twice. We see issues of class and economic status. So I'm already getting a sense that, that sure, this is a social science passage. It's talking about society and that's what the social sciences cover uh, and policy in society and education and class this is a social science passage. So when I'm breaking down a GMAT passage on my test and I have my scratch paper what I'm doing is trying to pull a little bit of content or context or logic or author's opinion from each paragraph. So what we're going to do here is we're going to diagram that right here while we're watching. So here's that first paragraph, right? That first paragraph talked about public education and it talked about class, like where you are in society, uh, upper class, middle class, lower class, that sort of thing. So that's all I'm writing on my GMAT scratch pad for the first paragraph. P1, I just have these couple of words that help me keep organized. Great, let's keep reading. So, um, unfortunately, even with the good intentions of public education, serious inequities occur in minor, minority and low income areas. Okay, I'm done reading. Just read that first sentence and let's go down to this last sentence. And in this situation, the attempt to bridge the inequality gap only served to raise the dropout rate for students from poorer neighborhoods who would rather not go to school than try to learn a socially intimidating atmosphere. So this was a longer sentence than I, if, if, if I didn't get it the first time, I just read it again. And in this situation, the attempt to bridge the, so they're talking about inequality still, um, and then dropout rates, and they're still talking about class. Um, so those issues are still pre prevalent. So in the first paragraph, we had public education and class. In the second paragraph, they're sort of continuing with that. Um, he mentions, unfortunately, even the good intentions of public education still create inequities. So we can see that the theme is continuing. Let's read the last paragraph. It is true that without the state providing education, children's access to education would be wholly dependent on the economic status of their parents and upward mobility would be nearly impossible. 
and then we get a however to simply view it, what is it, I might have to go back, public education as an educational ideal or no, that's not what they're talking about. Um, they're talking about the necessity of They're talking about everyone getting the same education. It's an educational ideal in utopian terms without taking into account that serious inequities in the system must be addressed is naive. So this is actually a pretty long passage and we don't want to spend five minutes on the GMAT reading it. So when we read the first and last sentence of each paragraph, we can answer almost always the main idea questions which we're going to take a look at today and then the other types of questions that will help us focus where to read more specifically to answer those questions. So what did we pull out of this passage? Um, so in paragraph one uh, we had we had public education and class. In the second paragraph they start talking about the inequalities and then in the last paragraph he sort of summarizes um, some of his points on the passage. So we're going to come back to this. Uh, don't worry, we're going to take a look at some more passages and then we're going to come back, learn some more about how to read them and then jump into main idea questions. So the next type of passage that we'll see a lot are... I'm just going to pick a random answer here just so we can move on. There we go. So this passage is going to be a science passage. Let's take a quick look at it again and make sure that we can identify it as one. So first sentence, go ahead and read it. Then go ahead and read the last sentence of this paragraph. Great, so we can definitely tell that we're talking about a science passage. And again, we see birds and dinosaurs, birds and dinosaurs, and they're talking about the feathers um, and bone structure. So my sense is that that's probably what this whole pair of passage is going to be about. But let's go ahead and continue, and we'll read the first sentence and the last sentence of this second paragraph, which is the only other paragraph. Great, so we should see the same points reiterated. Um, it wasn't until the last 20 years, however, that scientists found evidence to support the link between dinosaurs and birds, so they're still talking about dinosaurs and birds. And then current evidence such a, found in fossils and chemical analysis um, that most modern scientists agree that feathers evolved only in, once in dinosaurs and then were passed down to all later species. So again, a science passage, we can break down the basic points made in the basic content covered in the different paragraphs. So we had birds and dinosaurs, more birds and dinosaurs, but then talking about the research that's been done and the sort of recent learnings. And then at the end they talk about current evidence and the fact that most modern uh, scientists actually agree when uh, earlier on there was a lot of uh, sort of disagreement as to whether this was the case. So that was a science passage. Let's just pick an answer that so we can move on. I'm not good guessing random answers. Uh, great, and so now we should have a humanities passage. Let's take a look and, and see if that's the case. Go ahead and read the first sentence and last sentence of each of the uh, first two paragraphs here and then we'll scoot down because this is a long one as well.
So we can see that we're talking about Shakespeare, we're talking about Sir Francis Bacon, this is a humanities passage, history and literature. The first paragraph brings up a point around whether or not Sir Fran that Sha uh, all of Shakespeare's work were actually written by Sir Francis Bacon. And then they say, however, uh, people tend to dismiss this. And then they switch that in the second paragraph. And they say the, the, thesis, the controversial thesis has recently grained new ground. In the beginning of the third paragraph, uh, this person, Gross, lays out a case for Bacon's authorship. So we can see that this author is presenting, has already presented both sides as possibilities and is discussing the controversy that exists around this issue. You'll also notice that the style of this passage is pretty uh, heavy handed in terms of the language and some of the sentences. I think the second paragraph is just one sentence, is that right? No, there's two sentences in there. But some of these, uh, both the first and second paragraph, I think are just made up of two sentences each. Um, so you can see that that's a, it makes it a little bit more difficult to read it quickly and dissect the pieces because they don't have, they haven't parsed them for you. They gave them as long points. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue and do that for the rest of the paragraph, first and last sentence in each paragraph. So the passage takes a crazy twist and starts talking about alchemy and uh, how it relates to Romeo and Juliet and then the relationship to the uh, dog star um, and the author seems to make a couple of points around the argument lacks persuasiveness and unfortunately so not necessarily doesn't seem to be a huge fan of gross and I haven't read the whole passage, but I actually understand a lot about what the author's thinking is and what the overall gist of the passage is. And what it turns out on the GMAT is that that helps me answer questions. Uh, so that's why I read it this way. So uh, let's take a look at A. Let's go ahead and pick lucky answer choice A and see if we're no, no, getting closer. Uh, and now let's take a look at a business passage. This one's a little bit shorter. Uh, go ahead and apply the process first and last sentence of each paragraph. So we can see that this is a business passage. It's talking about pricing and consumers and uh, the Apple computer business. And it starts with one point about how customers used to do this, but then they did this. Apple is an example of this second point. And then they sort of end it with this, however, recent trends have shown that saving a few dollars by skimping on details may not be worth the cost. So the author seems to be in favor of the Apple model. So. The words that you saw me circling on this passage are pretty much the words that I would be writing down in my notes when I'm working on the GMAT scratch pad. Uh, we obviously can't write on the screen at the GMAT, but if you'll notice, I never really circle more than one or two or three words in a paragraph, and it's actually pretty quick to write those down when I'm working on the GMAT. So.